I will start with the green hydrogen production through electrolysis. Um, I will focus on energy conversion from wind to, to gas. So the chemical process uh, to produce hydrogen is called electrolysis. Uh, water and electrical energy are converted into hydrogen and oxygen. If the uh, electrical energy to produce hydrogen comes from uh, renewable energy sources like uh, wind and sun, then the hydrogen produced is labeled as, as green. So this technology has got many advantages when it comes to enabling electrification. So sustainability and versatility being two of them. But it, it does have uh, quite a few challenges associated to it. And those are related to high energy consumption, uh, safety in managing uh, hydrogen and the high cost. We believe that simulation-based R&D can definitely mitigate the risk and then put you on a path to success. If we start with a microgrid that is solar-based, so those are the elements that you're going to find. Photovoltaic panels, energy storage unit, often with a battery, and then the electrolyzer, where water and electrical energy will be resulting in hydrogen. In my case, I will be using a, a microgrid wind-based, then so when it comes to green hydrogen production from renewables, uh, the ability to import uh, data from wind or sun into models is very important. And, and there are many available sources online that you can, uh, you can find. Uh, so in this case, you see uh, a wind speed trace for almost one day from Inverness in Scotland. And that can be definitely be very well done in MATLAB and then reused by Simulink and Simscape models. So if you have now made the choice of using simulation for, for your development in green hydrogen, then of course, uh, fidelity is going to be a critical element into that. If you are uh, focusing on embedded developmental component, your target is going to be milliseconds or microseconds. You will naturally need high fidelity models. If you are, on the other hand, uh, interested in assessing key system performance and the phenomena that lapse over seconds or minutes, then Medium fidelity uh, will make a lot of sense. If your goal is, on the other hand, assess the feasibility of a green hydrogen, because you're looking into ROI calculation for months and years, then very agile models with the lowest fidelity will, will be definitely the right choice for you. Let's say we focus on the electrolysis unit to start with. So I'd like to bring your attention to uh, an open Simscape implementation of an electrolyzer and that captures the thermodynamics really in detail. But then if you are, once again, a bit more focused on system level analysis, agile simulation, you want to understand the technology and uh, electrolyzer block and an and, and example in Simscape Electrical uh, are definitely very suitable for you. And this is going to be uh, the case for the seminar. We're going to use that electrolyzer block. So let's get started with a, a high fidelity view on green hydrogen production, embedded development, and component analysis. So what, what are the challenges that we are going to, to meet at the physical unit level? So those are going to be related to the components themselves and how we regulate them. So the electrolyzer being a core element into that system, energy storage, often a battery, and then a BMS, battery management system, needs to interact with the rest of the elements and the grid. Power converters, they, they need fault management, grid connection algorithms, uh, regulation of power and, and even cooling. And then the generator. So if we zoom in a bit into energy conversion, so we can say that the Simscape Electrical does give you a phenomenal library with uh, universal uh, machine models that will make the modeling process intuitive and quick. If you were to uh, uh, reuse electromagnetic design data, you can do it with the two uh, blocks that you see on the bottom of the screen as well. A detailed DC-DC converter can be assembled from discrete elements like diodes and channel MOSFETs or IGBTs that can even have a thermal option. A similar reflection applies to AC to DC converters, so we can use a pre-built uh, component where we can make a choice on what particular switch we want to use. But of course, you can compose your own converter with discrete elements as we saw before. 
in the end, you will be able to capture high frequency phenomena due to pulse width modulation in the converter. So it's important to emphasize that different levels of fidelity can and will coexist in, in models along the development cycle. So in this case, high fidelity on the generator side uh, and then medium fidelity on the electrolyzer on the load side. This video is going to uh, illustrate the first case of a standalone electrolyzer with high fidelity. First, an overview of the architecture of the model with uh, all the elements a permanent magnet, a generator with all the different parameters that are needed, then a signal of speed discontinuous applied onto the shaft, the control unit with a field-oriented control algorithm for the generator, see the, the architecture with outer and inner loop. The outer loop will regulate the DC link voltage and generate current reference. Inner controller will regulate the current and generate voltage references. Finally, the pulse width modulation is also given by the tool. You have different options to customize your own PWM sampling modes. With that, then let's get some results of current, electrolyzer and generator, voltage, absorbed electrical power, DC link and voltage, and then energy consumption per kilogram of hydrogen and then the estimated hydrogen produced for one day. Now, let's look into the second case. Uh, in this case, the electrolyzer is not going to be standalone, but uh, connected to the grid. In this case, what we are interested in is to see how the electrolyzer reacts to a change of frequency in the grid. So have a phase lock loop that detects the frequency and then uses that for control purposes. Then uh, a transient is observed in the generator currents. The amplitude and the duration of that transient should be limited in time if the controller is doing a good job. So Simscape Electrical does give you the possibility to do harmonic or FFT analysis. In this case, we're going to do harmonic analysis of a current 15 cycles after the transient. So results can be given as a bar diagram or as a list of numerical values. Those can be exported through MATLAB to any other environment like Excel. So what are the challenges uh, that we expect at the system level? I think those fall down into two categories, plant and algorithmic uh, design related. For the plant, the first question to ask yourself is, of course, what is the best concept to produce green hydrogen? Is it going to be AC versus DC generation if you're going for wind or grid versus remote? Is wind or solar the best choice, or do you want to combine both? How can requirements for the different components be met? So the size of those components, the integration, the cost, and then even the scalability of your concept. And then, do you really understand energy balances in your system? From an algorithmic point of view, okay, how can I architect the supervisory logic so that it accounts for all the different important functions? So energy storage contribution, the asset management selection of the right sources. Also important, how can you set up relevant set points meeting very, very, very different circumstances, history, meteorological conditions? So if we go back to energy conversion, then machine models that we're going to use in this type of work are going to be focusing more on energy flow than rather than machine control. DC-DC converters are going to be modular and average. So those can be controlled with a duty cycle, current or voltage reference. They account for losses and then they are going to be fast to simulate. Let's get started with a, a brief overview of the system. The DC generator with the mechanical part and the electrical part. Then we have the uh, energy storage with a dynamic battery. We have a supervisory logic where we set up switch logic, electrolysis and battery set points. It's worth mentioning that we have two ways of regulating that system, energy or voltage based. DC, DC converter controlled with a voltage reference and then accounting for losses then our electrolyzer multi-domain then we get some uh, important kpis from the system so current voltage hydrogen mass produced and energy consumption so in this case for the voltage-based algorithm so production is around 38 kilogram of hydrogen what will happen if we use the energy-based method instead 
hydrogen production goes up significantly to 48 kilograms. Here we can see a trace of the current generator electrolyzer. Just a brief recap on the results of simulation. We can draw two conclusions here. So the energy-based method is more aggressive. It allows us to produce more hydrogen, but at the same time, the mean current in the generator is a lot higher, which means that the lifetime of that generator will be lower if we use it in that way. To wrap up, expected hydrogen production, water consumption, the algorithm or the energy management solution that makes sense, how intensely you want to use the physical assets, energy storage based on a given capacity and size, what is the contribution and the impact on the outcome of, of hydrogen.